It's been just over a year since the first Warcraft movie came out, and after recently rewatching the film, I came to a strange realization. That despite how messy it was, I actually kind of enjoyed the movie. And I definitely liked it as much as I did some more widely praised blockbuster movies from that year, like Doctor Strange. Before I get into why that's the case, I will say that I agree with much of the criticism. Warcraft is an incredibly flawed film. It zips from location to location without ever establishing a strong sense of place. Most of the human characters fall totally flat, and their stories, plot twists can be spotted well in advance of their occurring. So why, despite all of those problems, did I like the movie? Well, to listicle the shit out of this video, here's four reasons why I enjoyed 2016's Warcraft. Reason number one, it's a film that takes risks. Ironically, the part of Warcraft that sounds the most ridiculous is the part it's most successful at executing. It tries to portray big CGI orcs as deep characters with their own social structure and motivations, rather than just evil CGI monsters that the good guys need to kill. In a world full of reboots totally lacking in creativity and the overly simplistic moralities of most superhero movies, it would have been easy to just make the orcs bad guys and tell a familiar good versus evil story, but instead set in the world of Warcraft. Instead, Warcraft gives us Duratan, a conflicted clan leader who has to balance tribal tradition, his role as chieftain, and the fact that he now has a son. And on top of all of that, his people's homeworld is a dying wasteland, and the only way to secure their future is by invading a new world in a new dimension. He's a character with a complexity and depth, and by portraying him that way, Warcraft turned a totally imaginary, computer-generated character into someone that even we non-CGI normal folks could relate to. And that is totally awesome. Reason number two, the plot has actual stakes. So quick spoiler warning, because Warcraft had the balls to do something that even some of the best blockbuster movies don't. It kills off its characters. By the end of the film, half of the major players have died. Duritan and his wife, Medivh, Lathar's son, and that king guy that no one remembers the name of. What is his name? And these aren't just deaths without consequence, like we saw in Rogue One. Duritan's death secures Gul'dan's leadership of the Horde, and the King No One Remembers death puts Garona in a position of honor and gives Lothar the throne. On top of that, the King's death builds to a moment of dramatic irony, where Lothar thinks Garona betrayed him and humanity, while in reality she has effectively become a mole within the Orc ranks. So not only do the battle scenes have actual fatal stakes, but the consequences of those deaths are reflected in the plot as well. Now compare that to Marvel's Civil War. Overall, Civil War is a much more narratively cohesive film. The plot is simple, yet propulsive, and every character gets at least one chance to shine. But all those characters need to be around for the next big Avengers movie, and that means no one can die. So in a movie titled Civil War, it never feels like any of the characters are fighting with the gloves off. Even the guy who gets paralyzed halfway through the movie is walking again by the end. And even though Cap and Tony have a big bust up, they are still buddies over the phone by the time the credits roll. There's literally no consequence to any occurrence in the film. Civil War is supposed to feel like the Marvel Universe is crashing down, but instead it feels so sanitized and safe. The dramatic tension is just an illusion meant to trick the audience into thinking the stakes are real. And I'm just using Marvel as an example. Dawn of Justice killed off Superman only to imply his resurrection about 20 minutes later. This trend of franchise building means almost every movie coming out these days falls into this trap. They don't have stakes. And that's why it was genuinely enjoyable when Warcraft did. Reason number three, the soundtrack. Anyone who watches Game of Thrones can attest to the fact that Raman Jawadi is one hell of a composer, and he brings that talent to Warcraft in full force. While not every track is an instant classic, the Horde and Medivh themes feel both unique and very apt for the characters they were written for. I still listen to the Horde theme when I'm writing villains. 
or playing Dungeons and Dragons. Mostly Dungeons and Dragons. Reason number four, it tries to build a world. Now it's true that Warcraft jams way too much into its running time, but that's because it's ambitious. It's trying to build a world, not trying to set up a reusable cast of characters it can make three movies a year about. And even though this world building caused a lot of its problems, I have to give it props for trying. Unlike ubiquitous properties like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter, Warcraft couldn't assume everyone going into it knew about the world. At the same time, it also had to cater to the fans, who know almost everything there is to know about the world. And that means it had to cram triple the amount of content into one film, trying to both please the existing fans as well as explaining things to new ones. What? It blazed past characters and locations we should have cared about simply because there were so many of them. In an ideal world, the movie would probably have followed a simpler story, or cut some of the side characters from the narrative, but doing so would probably have meant changing Warcraft's lore. So, stuck between a rock and a hard place, at least the film tried to stay true to its source material. And I think that's why I kinda like it. It told a morally interesting fantasy story that both established the world and fit into one single movie. And yes, that made it very messy, but at least it tried something new. Some of it was dumb and a lot of it was silly, but there were brief, shining moments in there. So if anything, it's a film that should be commended for trying. You know what I'd have done if I were in charge of the movie? I'd probably have started with the fall of Arthur's storyline. A good guy who slowly trades his soul away to save his people? That's probably still one of my favorite storylines from any video game. But instead we get Ragnar Lothbrok being a less cool, more generic version of a viking. Who wants to be king? Where was that guy? <laughs>